Miss Gwen Poole is still lost in the Marvel Universe with all of those thoughts of comics in her head. What's next on her agenda now that she is in charge of MODOK's old Merc group? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, the ultimate way to get your comic books recapped back to you. You see, just telling you what happened would be boring, so we do it with dramatic flair, including music, voiceovers, and sometimes weird sound effects. I hope you guys enjoy, and don't forget, all alterations to the panel section images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Now, in our last video starring Gwenpool, she teamed up with the new Spider-Man, Miles Morales, to stop a school bomber, but after Gwen tried to kill the boy, Miles webbed her up and left her for the police to be taken care of. While sitting in her sell, that truck and the rest of the mercenaries broke her out, and Gwen realized that being in a comic book world really isn't always fun. This story begins in Times Square, where Gwen finds herself being chased by squid-like aliens known as the Dithidians. Since she took a selfie after killing one of their kind, they decided that it was time to come to Earth and get their revenge. But after catching a baby pig dressed up as Gwenpool, the aliens decided to compare the photo, and it's a perfect match! Meanwhile, over at the Bay Ridge area, Batroc calls Gwen from the mobile base as she heads over to meet with their contact, asking how is it that she managed to escape the Tithidians. She tells them that it was easy. She dressed up a pig in her costume because all aliens can't tell the difference between the species. Batroc asks if she knows this because of comics. She tells him no, it's because they're racist. They are the enemy, they are aliens, and they are racist. That's why. As Gwen goes on, Batroc stops her and tells her to just make sure that she leaves a good impression with their client. Their organization needs assignments. In the back, Terrible Eye shouts, Tell Gwen we need money! Modoc gave us money! Gwen says, yeah, she knows. Is the address correct? Because this place looks like it's somewhere that her grandpa would come to retire. After hanging up, Gwen rings the doorbell to the client's home, and the door slowly creaks open. As she walks in, she says that the spooky automatic door is more like it. So that's cool. After walking around the house for a bit and finding no one, she says, judging by the fine decorations, she's pretty sure their client is Dracula. So they're meeting Dracula. She then asks Cecil if his ghost sense is picking up on the king of the vampires. Cecil appears in a chair next to her telling her no, he does not sense Dracula. He's pretty sure that he doesn't even know if he could. In fact, she shouldn't even be in here. Gwen says, what else are you gonna do? You're dead. But judging from the silence, that was probably too soon. While the two of them go on, the study door opens and out steps a plain old man. The man shakes Gwen's hand, telling her that his name is Vincent, and all Gwen can say is that he's so normal. Vincent then takes a seat at his desk, telling her that he clearly remembers not inviting ghastly specters into his home. Gwen tries to say that he's with her, but Cecil tells her it's alright, he just wanted to make sure she got here safe anyway, so he'll catch her back at the base. Vincent tells Cecil, thank you for respecting his wishes, may peace be with him soon, to which Cecil tells him, thanks? Once the two of them are alone, Vincent explains how they live in a very turbulent world, one where superheroes and villains battle over the fate of the planet every single day. Gwen mentions that she knows of a world without superheroes, it's pretty boring. Vincent then goes on to say that the main reason he would like to continue working with them at MODOK is because they are in fact not superheroes human, but rather just normal people. Even Terrible Eye, she's just a very nice young lady who happened to find a powerful magical headpiece, and everyone else is just agents with guns. Gwen asks, other agents? But rather than answer that question, Vincent goes on to tell her that they are his kind of people, which is why he needs them to handle the Tithidian problem. However, there will be a payment by the truckloads if they can handle it peacefully. A short while later, in the subway, Gwen tries to figure out how exactly she's supposed to wipe out a bunch of super advanced aliens. Because, now thinking back on it, that sounds pretty hard. But while she thinks, she sees two officers making their way into the station. The officers spot her and they radio in that they found her, but as they go to talk to her, they see Gwen with her head in her backpack. She pulls her head out, wearing her mask, shouting that she isn't going to jail! And that's when she hears the aliens beginning to talk. She looks over to see the Tithidians walking towards her, and she says, That's cool. Not only do the cops want to arrest me, the aliens are working with the cops. Super cool! Not really, though. As everyone begins to surround her, one officer shouts that she's under arrest for destroying a bunch of stuff. And these aliens want to take her away or something. They don't speak very good English. Gwen notices that there's a passing train and runs over to the crowd, jumping onto the back of it, telling him that if they ever figure it out, never get back to her. Okay, bye. A little while later, Tony starts to treat Gwen's wound on her arm, and she asks if there's a reason that their base is like hanging upside down or anything like that. Tony dismisses the question, asking how did this even happen? Gwen explains that she may have jumped onto a speeding train, but other than that, why is she on the news? Tony tells her that it seems the NYPD and the aliens are working together, so that would be newsworthy, which means they're screwed. 
His phone then begins to ring and Gwen asks if he's going to answer that. He tells her, nah, it's just debt collectors back from when he didn't have health insurance and had to go to the hospital. Gwen says that he won't have to worry about that soon. The client gave her a job and is offering a truckload of money. And right now everyone needs to meet up on the bridge. The main room's the bridge, right? While rounding everyone up, Gwen begins to hear laughing coming from Terrible Eye's room and she walks in. She sees Cecil and another girl sitting there and asks who they are. Sarah jumps up shouting, oh my gosh, it's me, Terrible Eye. And she hugs her and tells her that they never get to see each other out of costume, do they? She goes on to state that she shouldn't be keeping the mask off for too long. Sometimes she'll forget things and sometimes she just needs a break. Gwen says, right. She remembers a long while ago that she was having a conversation with a rock. Sarah picks up the rock and says, how can she explain it? The rocks, actually she really doesn't know. Maybe when she's back in character, she'll remember. Gwen tells her that's okay. She doesn't care about the rocks, but she does have a job. So they all need to have a house meeting. Once everyone gathers up in the command room, Gwen tells everyone that their client has asked for them to eliminate the Tithidians again. There's a few problems with it though. The Tithidians are working with the police and they have no clue where they are. They also have some crazy overpowered weapons. However, she has a solution since they only want her. She'll go back to Times Square and call them all out. Meanwhile, to keep the police busy, Batrock will crash the United Nations meeting. While they chase him, Cecil will ghost hack the police computers with a flood of false reports. Terrible Eye, or now Sarah, will create a bunch of illusions making everyone think the banks are being robbed. So long as it all goes according to plan, she will be in Times Square killing all the aliens. Cecil then asks Gwen why does she sound so confident about this plan and she tells him because she also has a secret plan. However, she can't reveal it right now until the super cool dramatic music begins. As the night begins to set, Gwen begins to get into position waiting for Batrock to report in. However, while waiting in the alleyway, Gwen notices that there are cops there, which means Cecil didn't put in the false reports. Gwen frantically tries to call everyone asking why they're late and then she notices a shadow walking up on her. Vincent steps out, telling her that he was hoping that they could talk. Gwen says that she's about to pull off that big alien killing job, so right now isn't the awesomeness of times, but that's when Cecil appears from the wall shouting that the Tithidians found their base and captured everyone. Gwen asks how they found it, and Vincent says that it was actually him that informed them. Gwen asks why would he do that, and Vincent tells her because her plan was to create a massive firefight in the middle of Times Square while disabling the efficiency of the city police. The job was supposed to be handled peacefully, and that was clearly not going to be that. Gwen then asks how did he find out, and Vincent plainly tells her that he bugged her when she came to his house, nanobots in the air. Cecil says they need to hurry and get out of there, but Vincent shouts telling him to be quiet. He then goes on to state how at first he thought the Tithidians were the problem, but now it seems that they are the problems. He grabs Gwen by the arm, telling her that she will meet her friend soon, but first he wants to hear more about this world without superheroes. It sounds marvelous. She takes out her gun and shoots Vincent in the side of the head, telling him, no, I think I'm just gonna go save my friends. And as Gwen pulls away, Vincent's grip doesn't release. He looks back, showing the exposed part of his Doombot face, and he tells her, you're not going anywhere. Vincent explains that his origin was that he is a Doombot who was raised by an old man who liked to enjoy a peaceful life until the superhero showed up. He then stops when he sees Gwen on the phone asking if she's even listening. He's telling his origin story here. And she tells him mostly, but Vincent starts to float, shooting electricity, shouting, How dare you ignore Vincent Doonan? After running through the street, Gwen says that she wasn't ignoring him. She was just calling in her secret backup plan. As the phone picks up, Gwen asks Miles' mother if he's home. To which she tells him no, he's actually out, but she can leave a message. Suddenly, Gwen realizes that her secret backup plan is not very well thought out. She turns back after throwing her grenade, shouting that she's just trying to stop aliens like him. Vincent knocks the grenade away, telling her that she doesn't understand. Aliens, mutants, radioactive whatevers, you all disturb the peace. And it turns out that you are far worse than the Tithidians. In fact, they are being quite respectful in my home, keeping an eye on the others until I return. Meanwhile, over in Bay Ridge, Batrock says that he doesn't like this. Their captors let the pig make a mess in the corner, and they're just leaving it there. Back in Times Square, Gwen crawls under a car asking Cecil if he has had any luck in hacking into Vincent. But as Vincent pulls Cecil out of him, he tells her, I wasn't able to. Vincent has some magic protecting him. Gwen sighs, stating, of course, he's a Doombot. And then an officer leans down, telling Gwen that she's under arrest for shooting up Times Square, along with a bunch of other things. While Vincent starts destroying everything, shouting, look what you're making me do! Gwen tells the officer that there's a Doombot over there, maybe she should prioritize a bit. After crawling out, Gwen asks for the officer's name, and she tells her that her name is Officer Gray, but Gwen cuts her off telling her, great, you're no longer an extra, and by the laws of the narrative that drives our existence in this fictional world, we will meet again! Also, Vincent is coming this way, so watch out. 
Officer Gray tells the others to focus on Vincent, but as more officers show up, one officer asks why is that police car going the other way? The other officers with him tell him that sometimes people have a day where they just don't feel like issuing citations to supervillains. But in that car is Gwen speeding off, saying how this car might be too useful. Back with Officer Gray, Vincent tells her that they should de-escalate this situation. He will start by completely leaving it, and he jets off. A short while later, over at the mobile base, Gwen tells Cecil that they have a real problem on their hands here. She's out of ammo, and they're fighting a long-lost Doombot. The super-secret backup plan failed, and there are some aliens running around. Also, did she mention that there was a Doombot? Gwen lays her head on the table asking what is she supposed to do, and then sees that doorway with someone walking in it. She jumps up and runs after the man asking who he is, and the man says that he's just another field agent, though Modoc never sends them out. Speaking of, where is he? Their checks are kinda late. He then continues to walk into the barracks, revealing an entire team just sitting around, and the man says that Modoc never sends them out to see the kind of action that she does, and Gwen stares at him and says, well, you're about to. The next morning, Gwen drives the mobile base into Bay Ridge, shouting over the intercoms that she's here to eat some calamari. Over in the Tithidian ship, the commander tells the assistant to go ahead and decloak the ships, but what is calamari? The assistant tells him that it's a food that the humans make out of little ocean things that they kind of look like. And the commander says that's gross. Gwen asks, ships? And then suddenly, several Tithidian spaceships appear out of the sky. She looks around asking where's the battle mode for the base and begins frantically pushing buttons. And Cecil tries to tell her where it is, but through her many button presses, she's not quite listening. He then appears on the control panel shouting, here, push this button! I can't because I'm dead. Gwen pushes the button and then the machine guns and missiles spring out of the base. She says, very cool. And she stares at the control panel again and says that she already forgot which one to push. But before Gwen can fire, Vincent appears before the base, telling her that he never meant for things to escalate like this, especially not here, damn it. Gwen tells him that he backed the wrong horse, baby. Now it's personal. Now go get those Tithidians to release my amazing friends and we can go back to fight in the ocean or something. Vincent flies down into the Tithidians, telling them that he doesn't want any violence here, though they can still kill her. Batrock tells him that that's very classy. You truly are the worst boss that I've ever had. The Tithidians point all of their guns at Tony and Gwen says fine. And then she points the base's guns at an older couple walking outside. Gwen shouts that she'll do it. She doesn't even know these people. She very much likes her friends. So either fix this or she will kill off some random background characters. Vincent stares for a moment and then begins to fire electrical blasts at the aliens. She fires her cannons at the Tithidian ships, destroying them. And then the ship starts to go down towards the homes. Vincent shouts that he's sorry for breaking into the Cooper's house. But this is an emergency if they can't tell by now. The remaining Tithidians begin firing at the mobile base's legs, blowing it away, causing the base to crash down. And Gwen shouts to Ronnie, asking if it's ready. And she tells her that she's just finished. Though this is kind of pointless. She then shouts that this will work because it wouldn't if it was just generic henchmen. Release the pool boys! The base platforms drop and outstorm a squad of henchmen now dressed in Gwen's costume. Ronnie says that she understands now that she has no more pink fabric to give Gwen pants, right? And Gwen tells her, this is totally worth it. But while the pool boys begin to push back the forces on the ground, the other Tithidian airships begin to focus the fire on the mobile base. As the base begins to fall, Gwen shouts from the top in one of Modoc's escape chairs. She lands, picking up Batroc and the others, and then the base continues to fall. Vincent flies up to try and catch it before it falls onto a house and he shouts that he's sorry that he has to do this and he throws it. The Tithidian commander says that they are were fools to pursue Gwen and the assistant says, you are a poet, sir. The base then crashes into the other spaceships, destroying everything remaining in the sky and afterwards with the Tithidians taken care of, Gwen calls Officer Gray to tell her that it's safe for her to come in now. Which she does and she proceeds to arrest all of the pool boys. Gwen watches and tells everyone that once they get their new base of operations up and running, they've got themselves a real diddle of a jailbreak on their hands. Batroc tells her, no, there will be no jailbreak. Tony says that everything is gone. Everything they had was inside of that base that was just thrown and destroyed. Batroc goes on to state how under Modoc they had leadership, they were profitable, and they didn't cause any undue trouble. So as of now, it is time for this group to dissolve. Gwen shouts, wait, I saved you, the aliens are dead, no civilians were even hurt, I did the right thing, and Batroc tells her that she did. But sometimes it doesn't matter. There's no one better at fighting Captain America than him, and nobody who loses to him either, so this is goodbye. Sarah shouts, the winds call me! And she walks off while Tony says maybe they can get coffee sometime. With everyone leaving, Gwen turns to Cecil, telling him that at least she has him. Maybe they can go on a road trip in the cop car, or... But Cecil stops her, telling her that he would like to go visit his family by himself. But when he gets back, they can. Gwen hangs her head in her arms, stating, no, she gets it. Bye. Ronnie sits down, telling Gwen that she thinks she did a good job. She remembers when she used to work and there was so much damage that nobody got paid. So she can still offer her some jobs. Gwen puts her mask back on, and though she's crying, she says that's great. Because right now she's in the mood for the most insane, self-destructed, stupid, dangerous job that Ronnie has. 
and that concludes this arc of Gwenpool. Now, if you haven't been following, I am a huge fan of Gwenpool. I like the idea of a character that's crazy and goofy like Deadpool, but her whole entire character is that she's a real person. So make sure you check it out yourself, and don't forget you can subscribe to this channel to keep up to date in your favorite comic books, and on top of all of that, I'm also on Twitter and Instagram. I'll see you guys there.